Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this big guy right here. This is the Herman Knives Ishtar. First off, though, in the name of full disclosure, I want to thank Polish Custom Knives uh, for sending this guy along. That's right, this guy was sent to me directly by, well, technically Polish Custom Knives, but they, they I think they're the main dealer for Herman, and so more or less by the manufacturer. They reached out to me, said, hey Nick, you've seen a couple of other Hermans, are you interested in the Ishtar? I said, absolutely. They asked what kind of things I might like to see. I told them, and they sent one along. Uh, nonetheless, we... Uh, they, they know, as always, I've sent them the disclaimer on my website. I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. Um, and they still send along. We do have to assume this is the absolute very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my absolute best not to uh, let that affect the nature and quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. This is not a small knife. Here it is against the PM2, the uh, Ontario Rat number 2, and, of course, your Spydeco Delica. And so we see here... Not a small knife whatsoever. I mean, actually, a couple of more relevant size comparisons would be to some other Herman knives. This is the Herman Knives Sting, uh, which is actually the very first Herman I had on the channel. This is the Vespatilio, which in a lot of ways is a, 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 a smaller twin in terms of its overall, you know, display and whatnot. Um... And then here it is against the Dragonfly. And the Dragonfly uh, is a rather large pocket knife, right? Um, and what we see here is that, you know, the, the, the Ishtar is actually sort of a, a, a thinner Dragonfly on Y, right? It's about the same size in terms of everything else, but it's just, it's a little less tall. And that makes it carry a lot more reasonably, uh, which I appreciate very much. Next thing, what the heck's a Herman Knives? Well, Herman Knives is uh, Bartosz Herman. He's uh, based there out of Poland and uh, does some amazing work. And actually, they did a, a little video of him in his shop uh, recently. I'll, if I remember, I'll link it in the description down there below. But it, it's worth watching. And then this is sent to me by, like I said, Polish Custom Knives, who seem to be the main dealer for Herman Knives. Um, and, uh, you know, they seem to be nice folks too. And they ship to the US, by the way. That's not a problem there. Then finally, one big note. A bunch of people are going to be like, oh my god, Nick! Um, because the price on this model, as configured right here, is 1675 bucks. That is a good chunk of change. And already I hear the comments, oh my god, I would never... I, yeah, yeah, I know you'd never pay that much for a knife. Give it time, you will. Um, but nonetheless, <laughs> you go in deep. The, the base model on this guy is, is $737, bucks, which is still a good chunk of change. But um, the, when it's not gussied up with the, 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 the fancy materials, it's definitely a little more reasonable. But anyways, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting knife here. Um, so to start with, actually, a, a weird little thing, and I don't generally point it out, but it is kind of nice, um, and that is the case that this guy came in. This came in a very, very nice case with a milled out, you know, I can set this guy in here, and it fits exactly in this space here, and it even includes the little tool for the pivot, which is actually a Torx T20, right? But nonetheless, this is a very nice case. You can see a little bit of a uh, Polish surface on the top there, because uh, it's Polish now. Okay. Anyways, the, the case is one of those things here that this is a nice object. It's an object that one might like to keep around as opposed most to most cases, which is sort of like, uh, well, okay, great, uh, yeet, and then you, you, you're done with them, right? Um, so I appreciate that very much. That's completely shallow, but it is nice. Next thing, the inlay on this guy is very, very nice. This is a Timascus inlay, as well as the clip is Timascus, as well as the backspacer is Timascus. All of these surfaces are a, are a type of uh, basically forged uh, titanium that have different grades of titanium. And then when you heat them up, they actually uh, heat up to different colors, basically. Um, and you end up with this beautiful gradation in there. And this is good Timascus, right? One of my complaints last time with the Vespatilio is that, you know, this is uh, same kind of material. But in this case, we can see the definition between the different grades is much, much stronger, etc. Um, same thing in the back here. This is just, on the Ishtar, is just a better quality of Damascus, I feel like, or at least, the very least, a, a better pattern than we saw on the, uh, the, on the Vespatilio, and I really do appreciate that. Um, what we also see here is a bottom-based screw. Basically, the screw that tells the inlay in is actually coming in from the bottom, like, through the knife, uh, that is, through the handle, rather than being on top, like it is on the Vespatilio. I kind of dinged him for that, and th th that was reversed, and that's a beautiful thing. I like seeing that. You also get the same material in the clip as well as the backspacer, where you can see those nice forged lines well. It's just, it's really nice. Next thing, the ergos on this knife are actually very good. It feels really nice in the hand, and the clip is well done, being nice and long, distributes a lot of the force, puts the tip of the clip where you want it to be. Ergonomically, this is actually very nice in the hand. It's relatively slim, but it works pretty well in my uh, relatively small hand, so that's good. Next thing, details on this are everywhere, right? One of the things I maybe like most in terms of details, take a look at this pivot here. I'll try and zoom in for you a little bit because 
Oh, yeah. Look at that little bit of spiralation going on. And in fact, we see the same thing on the other side with the torques in the middle of it. That's not a necessary detail, but it is an appreciated one, right? I, I, I gotta say, I like that very, very much. You also get some nice details like the screws here, um, as well as on the... Um, on the back of the knife here, but these screws have been polished. There's a nice little uh, round doming to them here, and it almost looks like they've been blackened a little bit as well, but they just looks great. It's not just an unfinished screw sticking through a hole. He's taken the time to round them off, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I like that very much. Next thing, of course, this knife is not flat titanium. This is contoured. The whole thing has a radius to it, and on that radius, you have this waviness to it as well, and so that waviness, which, by the way, carries through onto the inlay, Nice. Very nice. Really, really well done there. The clip on this guy, like I said, matches, but it's also well done in and of itself. It's got a very nice uh, kind of tension to it. It's relatively thin. Um, it's nice and long, which I actually appreciate on a longer knife. It just keeps things much more manageable. One thing that really shows mastery is this little area right underneath here where the texture pauses underneath the clip, making this guy very easy to get into and out of the pocket, which I appreciate very, very, very much. Um, This is internally milled. If we look inside here, we can see... There we go. You can see the little pockets in there where weight has been removed. Um, the, well, where material has been removed to remo reduce weight, which is really nice. And, you know, it's just really well done where you look at it, even the top of it here. If we look at the Damacor here, we see that the Damacor is dead center. You want that, of course. You want it to be the case that the uh, grind review Reveals just as much of the base metal in there as possible. But that's good. That's really good. And that's a sign of a maker who's really giving a damn. This knife shows me in as many words. I don't speak any Polish. But just by reading this knife, I know this maker cares. So that's a beautiful thing. And the details are great. Next thing and the last thing on the good side is the action. Action on this is Stella. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to brace my hand here. No wrist movement at all. It even sounds good, right? It's nice. This has a great action. And it's actually a liner lock. We can see here that there is a liner that is put in there. And this liner is actually beautifully tuned such that... And the nice thing about a liner lock relative to a frame lock um, is that you have... Uh, here's a frame lock. On a frame lock, this is not a flip and knife at all. But nonetheless, you have a bar. This is the Quiet Carry Drift uh, 2.0, by the way. But uh, if you put your fingers on this bar right here, you uh, end up changing the force of the detent. On a liner lock, that is actually not possible to do. Right, that's not great. Um, and so I'm sorry, it is great that you can't uh, that you can't actually change that because the detent is going to be identical every time, and it's good. It is really good. And then on the close. Oh, yeah, that's nice, too. And this is just barely wearing its way in. This guy is just a good action. Really, really excellent. So to me, at least, all of that is the good here, is that it's got a really nice action, great details, great ergos, a beautiful inlay here, stellar case, and just absolutely excellent. I, 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 I'm a fan, generally speaking. Um, on the great side to me, the blade is what's great here. It's kind of what you'd hope for in a pocket knife, but it's really well done. I mean, to start with, the edge on this guy is very, very thin. It comes out to a beautifully thin, very, very sharp tip here. It comes down to a beautifully thin edge. It cuts just beautifully. And this Damacor material. So this material is called Damacor. It's uh, cut by Damasteel AB. And it has a Damasteel, uh, like, like a Damascus-style steel on the top. Um, and basically, this is clad with Damascus on both sides and then a single steel in the middle. And that middle steel is a nitrogen steel. It is good. This thing holds an edge great. I love Damacor, and I kind of want more of it in my life. This is a really, really nice thing. And then coupled with a very deep etch, revealing some areas of the steel um, and not others, it's good. I like this blade so much. This is such a nice knife for cutting with. So um, to me, at least, what's great here absolutely is going to be that blade. On the bad side, this is a beefy boy, right? This is huge going ahead and measure up the blade length here and we are coming in here just over 3.75 inches just under nine and a or just over nine and a half centimeters yeah that's big that's a real big thing um and, and you know honestly that's kind of herman's style the vespatilio is his uh that's the small knife, but that's still over three inches, right? Oh, I should measure that on camera maybe, right? But anyways, I'd love to see Herman do things a little bit smaller on occasion, but at the same time, it's it's well done enough that, uh, okay, sure, no problem. Um, And by the way, that has the result of this having roughly zero lunchroom accessibility, uh, right? It, meaning that if you take this out in the lunchroom, Edna from accounting is 
diving under the table, on the phone to HR, and maybe wondering why part of it's purple, but mostly just fearing for her life. Right, this is something that is going to be very hard to pass in a, 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 a you know, boring daily workplace, right? Uh, so that is definitely something you want to keep in mind. It is also a little bit on the heavier side. If I uh, bust out my scale here, what we're going to see here is that this guy comes in at uh, about 4.2 ounces for about 3.75 inches. Is this heavy? No, not particularly. And, you know, the balance is about where I'd expect it. Maybe it could be a little bit more forward, but honestly, um, it is a little bit on the heavier side, and that's just because it's a big old freaking knife, right? Next thing, disassembly has always been a little bit of a weakness for Herman. The reason for that is, well, pretty simple. He does neat things like hiding screws and whatnot under clips, and also is using loose bearings, which I don't know that he needs to, but the results work, I guess. So anyways, this actually turned out to be a little easier than some of the past ones out there, but um, and nonetheless, disassembly is not someplace where Herman is, uh, shall we say, luxurious and joyful um, in that world. Next thing, this guy needs just a touch more choil. I don't know whether it is a design decision to have the bottom of the blade hook back this direction, but it, I, I can't tell if it's a mistake or not, and generally speaking, that means that yes, it was. But we see the blade gets a little bit wider here than it would otherwise. That's not something I'm particularly in love with. Um, next thing, and I, I'm nitpicking hard, but this is like a $1,700 knife. I'm gonna nitpick, right? Um, next thing, it does have a, a flipper tab on there that is definitely pocket pecking a little bit. The, the, the clip is such that the, the knife is mostly going to hang in such a way that the flipper tab isn't going to be hitting things, but at the same time, it definitely does have a pointy little flipper tab here, and if you're not a big fan of flipper tabs, this one's going to drive you a little crazy. Next thing, this guy is a hair off center. It's not bad, but you can definitely see if I hold it up there, it's just a little favoring the show side, and it always has been, right? Um, that's not necessarily amazing. I don't like that, and at this kind of a price point, that's not great. I want to see that nailed right down there. And then finally, that brings us to the price point, which is expensive. This is a lot of money. This particular knife here is, like I said, a gussied up version with Timascus, with the uh, Damacor there, Timascus clip, and just a lot of high-end finishing. This is a really amazing knife, and I feel like actually for the materials for the execution here, that, that's not bad. But this is pricey. This is really pricey. This is one of the nicest knives I have, but at the same time, that's still a high price, and that's going to keep it out of a lot of people's pockets, right? And so I would definitely encourage, especially on the, the base model, which, I, like I said, is about $740, um, I'd like to see that come down just a little bit to allow more people to get into Herman's work, right? Um, the, certainly the bougie models are going to be pricey, but this one is definitely, it's up there. And so to me, at least, um, that, that, that that's going to be a bad, is that this is very pricey, especially when fully kitted out here. But again, I mean, the quality's there. Um, it is just a hair off center. The pocket packer is definitely a thing. It needs a little tiny bit more choil. This assembly isn't great. It's a little on the heavy side. It is going to scare people in the lunchroom, and it is a big guy. Um, on the ugly front, there's nothing really ugly here, so I would just go on ahead and jump into the conclusion, which is that this is really nice, right? I can nitpick. I can complain. I can say, oh my god, they could have been, you know, a quarter of a millimeter that away on centering. I can vetch all I freaking want, but at the end of the day, oh boy, is this thing good. Um, it has these great inlays. It has great ergos. The details are there in a stellar action. By the way, one thing I didn't highlight there, this is a nice thing. Very often, inlays are done recessed. But and at first, when I got out of the box, like, oh, wow, this inlay is sticking up in the back. Then I realized, no, this inlay is sticking up exactly the same amount all throughout the sides there. Um, I, I kind of like it, actually. I, I'm not saying that I don't mind, like, a recessed inlays of flush, but this actually adds some. I, I kind of like it. I think it looks pretty cool. Having that little tiny bit of extra upness there, that, that's pretty excellent. The fact that it's flat all around. Anyways, I digress. Um, just another little detail there. But it's got a great action, and it's just got this blade that is amazing to actually use and cut with. I like that so very, very much. It is, of course, big, a little tricky to take apart, needs a little more choy, a little less pecking. The centering is a little off, and the price is definitely up there. But at the end of the day, my basic sensation is wow. Um, this is one of those knives that kind of reinforces that high-end production is not a slur, right? Um, and this, in my mind, cements Herman. And not that I didn't feel this way more or less already, um, handling other stuff, but this puts Herman right at the top with the CNC making great, so to speak. He is up there with Brian Nadeau, with Skiff, with the Grimsmos, the Holtz, Shirogorov, Koenig, the other kinds of people in the world who remind us that CNC 
PC-made production knives, that is, computer numerical control, um, the, the, the program, uh, can really be a step up from handmade custom rather than a step down, that are making knives that are really unequaled, I think, out there in the world. And I would put Herman in that same category of just like, you're doing good stuff. You're really doing good stuff. Honestly, the knives like this remind me why I love knives. Because they're just like, this is a human who put so much damn time and effort and thought into creating something amazing that had the skill to actually execute it well. I am impressed. This is a really nice knife, and it was sneaking into my pocket over and over again, even though this is absolutely not my size preference, right? This is a big knife, um, especially by my standards. Uh, you know, the Vespatilio is uh, uh, closer to my world, but at the same time, this kept slipping in there just because it's such a nice object, right? It's one of the very best knives I've got. Um, and all told, this is a gem, if anything is. With precise work, with great materials, details, the action, there's just a lot to love about this. It's just an amazingly nice piece, and it's just, it's Herman going balls to the wall and saying, I'm going to do something great, and by God, he did. So you know what? I, I am absolutely impressed. Really, really well done, Herman Knives. Um, keep up this work, and holy crap. Um, but for the most part, um, if you've got the budget and if you like this style, then uh, this is our right choice for you. Get it? Ishtar? Is the No? Hey, look, you try and do better. Anyways, I hope this was interesting that you didn't mind this Ishtaring in its own video. Uh... Okay, I'm going to have to polish my puns a little more next time. Hope this was interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.